Hi, I'm Cynthia Kirkaby, the CVO of Adaptified Inc., and you're watching Ion Business. Hi, I'm Bob Nishenzi, CEO of Supermed, and you are watching Ion Business. Good afternoon, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. I want to welcome Bob Nishenzi. See, I got it right that yeah, time. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who is the CEO of Supermed and just recently sold it to a PE company. So, welcome uh, to our discussion today. And can you tell us a little about yourself? Well, I have uh, uh, four boys. Uh, ages 23 to 32, and a wonderful wife. And uh, as far as career, I'm sort of what most people consider a cross between a hired gun and an entrepreneur. Now, you have worked for PE companies before, have whoa, you not? Whoa, 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 time out. Hang on. That was the first time in all the months I've done this. You fucked it up. I did? I don't know. My smile must have been too bright. <clears throat> You may want to keep your hands up. You guys, sorry, we've got to restart that. That was my mistake. Sorry. Ah, thankfully. you got to do it again? <coughs> right. Oh, we forgot to turn the camera on. <laughs> From the beginning? From the beginning. We're going to open it again. Okay? I get to rethink how many people get to say something twice and figure out if they would have done it. Well, this is okay. the third time. Yeah. Five, yeah, four, <coughs> three. Good afternoon. This is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. I want to take the opportunity to welcome Bob Nashenzi. Say, I got it right that time. <laughs> and um, Bob, you have been the CEO of Supermed. Can you tell us a little about yourself first? Yeah, um, I have four boys, a wonderful wife, uh, career-wise. Uh, most people consider me a cross between like a hired gun and a entrepreneur. So you can't keep a job? <laughs> well, some of the stints. I mean, I was a CEO of Claritas for, I think, eight years. So that was a, that was a good, good run. Well, that, and I used Claritas. It was a good product at the time that you were there. So let me ask you a question regarding... Um, your role, you ran for Congress, from what I understand. Um, How does that relate to being a business person? What have you learned? Um, well, first off, it's a lot different than business. Um, running for Congress is something that um, I don't think most people understand what, what it involves. But the most difficult part is, uh, you know, I sp you spend a lot of time in business trying to raise money, and that's usually for your company. Right. Um, also, if you're involved in, you know, a lot of charitable events, you're, you're raising uh, money for that charity. It's a lot different when you're asking for money for yourself. Right. And that, so there, the differences between Congress and running for any public office and, and running a business, um, I would say they're not even in the same plane. All right. Now, when you um, built Supermed before it was sold off, what were some of the issues that you faced in building Supermed to that successful conclusion? Um, well, the initial thing was when I came in, the company had been started by two uh, private practice surgeons. So I had to uh, reassess or, or, or clean up a lot of the issues they had done because they really weren't business people. Then the real challenge in any startup is raising funds and convincing people that this is a good investment. So. Once we started raising the funds and got a good vision in place and strategy in place, then we had to build the team. And we had to then build the team and bring all the development in-house, take it away from the offshore, and then get it out into the market. So once you start getting a product, then you've got to develop the go-to-market strategy. 
All right, so it was fairly easy from what I can tell, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express, so therefore you were able to relate to the surgeons. At least that commercials say it, right? I, I never understood the concept of Holiday Inn Express, but well, okay. neither did I, but it <laughs> sounded good. Uh, but tell me, what problems did you face in trying to change the culture? You have two surgeons that are very focused in one area, and now you're into the electronic health records and practice management, and you didn't have any background. How did you get everyone to agree to a common vision without you being in that bailiwick? Um, I don't, it wasn't as hard as you think as far as the culture and the uh, vision because it was just the two surgeons that were there when they hired me and they recognized very early on that they needed to bring in a business person. So in essence, I was building the culture of the company and I, when I built the team and building the culture. So it wasn't like I had to change any of the culture. A, a lot of it was getting the, the, the surgeons to understand some just basic normal business 101 practices. Now, if you can define the culture in your company, in Supermed, what was that culture really like? Uh, one of uh, mutual respect, uh, high integrity. I always would say, you know, I'd rather, you know, f uh, fail with integrity than succeed without it. Fair and enough. one that is very, very focused on the market. You know? okay. okay. Now, you're, you're now building this company. You have the opportunity to sell it to a PE firm. How did you position yourself for sale to a PE firm? And then I want to ask you what are some of the problems in trying to sell it to a PE firm? Yeah, well, um, what we targeted were people that we felt we would be a good strategic fit. So we ended up selling to our largest competitor who was owned by a PE firm. So once we convinced them that it was a good fit, it was a technology buy, the whole deal was then with the PE firm that owned our competitor. Okay. And what problems did you find in dealing with a PE firm? Did you find any problems? Was it just... Smooth sailing. Well, I, I, an acquisition is never <laughs> smooth sailing. I would say the biggest issue that I faced in this acquisition was um, private equity firms, especially the one we sold to, were used to dealing with very large acquisitions. We were a relatively small acquisition firm. We were probably their smallest acquisition. Okay. Um, but it was treated as if it was, you know, this billion-dollar acquisition. So I think there was a, a lot more hurdles that we had to go through in selling to a private equity firm than we normally would have had to in a, 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 a different type of uh, sale. And did you find any landmines that came up? Did you find any real gnarly issues that you had to face in dealing with this particular firm? Or... Well, I don't, think it, the same? I don't think it was the firm's issue. The, the company that we're, we're merged into was an LLC. And so one of the biggest uh, issues we faced was, since it was an LLC, we had to get 100% of our shareholders to sign a joiner agreement, meaning that they agreed to the operating agreement of the LLC because it was a part cash, part Got it. stock deal. Now, for our listeners and our viewers, uh, if you were to say give them one key business concept, one good takeaway in dealing with building a company and selling to a PE firm, what would that be? Um, listen to your attorneys early on and make sure you have all the right things in place. Things like make sure you're keeping minutes of your board meetings. Make sure you do a 409 evaluation. Um, make sure you have all the right documentation because when it comes to sale and you have that due diligence list, all those things will pay off at that point. You know, it's interesting. I would have not thought that would have been your answer, but it's pretty insightful. And, you know, again, Bob, I really appreciate your time and coming in and sharing your insights with, uh, with us. And this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. Have a good night. Thanks.